Yo guys, what's up? We are at Low Carb at Breckenridge 2018. We are here with some incredible speakers and groundbreaking individuals in the ketogenic community. We're taking advantage of this opportunity by asking as many of these top experts as possible the same one question and getting their answers. The question is, what is something you believed to be true one year ago that you no longer believe to be true? So I'm Dr. Eric Westman. I'm a professor at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. And a year ago, I believed that looking at the blood cholesterol, like the rest of my doctor colleagues uh, did, was real and valid and, and really important. And now I don't believe that anymore. Hi there, I'm Dr. Ben Bickman. I'm an associate professor at BYU. A lot of people in the low carb community fear protein because it spikes insulin. And I thought that was true and went along with it. And it appears to be not so true. Uh, when a person is adhering to a low carbohydrate diet, and they are normal glycemic because their, carbo their carbohydrate consumption is normal, then there is no insulin spike as a response to the ingested protein. I'm Dave Feldman. Uh, my blog is cholesterolcode.com. I'm kind of an insane engineer that's done a really stupid amount of experiments, but I'm obsessed with lipids, and I've done quite a lot of modifying of my own lipids, uh, mainly for science. It's been pretty exciting. Un unfortunately, I keep thinking of dark things, but... Uh, <laughs> I honestly believe that there was a lot more reverence for science and medicine. I got to be honest, it's not, it's not that I'm being dismissive of the whole field categorically. I'm just saying that, unfortunately, I feel that there's been a lot of data I've accumulated that I brought to people in a non-confrontational way, but in wanting to see if it can get properly challenged and means tested. And unfortunately, I find that there's not as much acceptance for new data depending on what that data shows. For what it's worth, I want to leave it on a positive note. I've also seen a lot more things that I've appreciated in that there's a growing number of people who get on the inside of this who start realizing uh, how much more important it is to work off of data. That part I like. Hello, I'm Nick Mailer, and I usually give the wild card talks at these conferences because I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist, but I did philosophy of science. A year ago, I thought that prioritizing grass-fed meat, grass-fed beef in particular, was important for health. I no longer really believe that. The person who helped me not believe that was uh, Dr. Peter Ballasted, who is an agronomist, and he very carefully pointed out the actual nutritional differences. He made it very clear, of course, that beef uh, doesn't really provide much omega-3 anyway, so worrying about the ratios if you're going to be eating pork or chicken, which is a waterfall of omega-6 naturally anyway, is irrational. And I realized I've been talking so much about the appeal to nature fallacy that I'd fallen foul to it myself, and so I know I look a lot more carefully when people make very specific claims about more expensive products that an elite can uh, lord it over other people about. We are here with Catherine Crofts. She is from New Zealand and she had an incredible speech at Low Carb Breckenridge. Hi, thanks for you guys all having me over here. A year ago, I thought that a lot more people understood the things that I knew about insulin. Talking to everybody around here, I've been so pleased to be able to do some education. I know I've got a lot more to learn and I'm just happy to be able to share things around. I'm starting to come to the understanding that, yeah, maybe I am an expert. <laughs> yeah. My name is Andreas Jenfeldt. Uh, I run the website dietdoctor.com with my team. And uh, I'm a Swedish family doctor. Well, it's all a matter of degrees, but I think a lot of people actually on a ketogenic diet, on a low-carb, high-fat diet, they overemphasize the need to eat fat, especially if you're losing weight, uh, trying to lose weight. So I think a lot of people would benefit from trying to eat perhaps a little, less, little bit less fat as they are losing weight to burn body fat instead. I'm Dr. Rod Taylor. Uh, I'm part of Low Carb Breckenridge 2018. I organise this with Dr. Jeff Gerber and we come and have a ski here as well. I'm from uh, Melbourne in Australia and I run the Low Carb Down Under website. A year ago I thought this was going to take a long time and that there was going to be a slow pick up and spread of the low carb, higher healthy fats message. And a year later, I just see lots of signs that this is moving very quickly, and I'm optimistic that we will get there sooner rather than later. Hi, my name is uh, Dorian. I am the founder of uh, Keto Mojo, and we make the most excellent oh, Keto Mojo ketone um, uh, meter that's the most affordable on the market. I believe in the power of change 
one person at a time, you can actually make a fundamental difference in this world. Sometimes there's this problem that is almost so big and so insurmountable and you think you can never make a dent into it. But one person at a time, you can do that because that's how you get to the top of Mount Everest. Since we started Kido Mojo and we put our entire house into the, into the game and then we lost our house in the fires, seeing the ketogenic community give back and support us, we know what we're doing it is right and we know that we're, we're nailing it for them and trying to bring it forward. Hey guys, Mike Mutzel with HighIntensityHealth.com. One thing that I used to believe that was very important that I no longer really believe now um, is that we have to be low carb all the time. I've been cycling in and out more based upon activity and I found that's really helped my performance. So um, it's great to you know try to have really high levels of ketones and, and live in this dogma that you're like 100% hardcore keto all the time. But for just my body type, I realized that like cycling carbs on a you know one or two days a week time scale, uh, increasing them from real whole foods, sweet potato, squash, and so forth can help my performance. So that's one thing that I've really learned to embrace and enjoy. Hi, I'm Amber O'Hearn and I am a carnivore and when I started a carnivorous way of eating, one of the things that I stopped eating was salt and I had the belief that on a carnivorous diet you didn't need to eat any salt. A lot of the evidence that I've seen about reasons to eat salt comes from epidemiology on high carb dieters and other um, very questionable sources of information. But recently um, I have decided that just because the ideas that are supporting a low salt intake might, might not have been very well founded, that doesn't mean that we might not need more salt. And especially since I've been looking more into what people are doing with fasting and the changes in electrolytes, I've started to reconsider that. I don't have any firm conclusions yet, but I have found out that salt may be involved in um, brown fat adipo, uh, uh, thermogenesis. And so this is one of the things that I've been reconsidering my beliefs on this year. Okay, so I'm Chris Webster. I'm a researcher at the University of Cape Town. I'm gonna to say qualitative research. A year ago, I didn't really even know what it was and I've come to appreciate it. So qualitative research is when, I guess it would mainly be you interviewing people is, is one example, where you're trying to understand their experiences or perspectives, which you just can't measure. So it's not something that you can, that you can, that you can measure. So you have to uh, ask them and try and find a way to make sense of their answers. So I'm Dr. Jake Kushner, and I'm at the Baylor College of Medicine and the McNair Medical Institute in Houston, Texas. A year ago, I was worried about ketones in type 1 diabetes because I didn't understand if ketones were dangerous or complicated. And what I've seen is that patients who, be, who go on nutritional ketosis and have type 1 diabetes are able to achieve amazing blood sugar control. And moreover, many of them are resistant to the effects of hypoglycemia. And it's amazing. They can have blood sugars very low and not and not actually have any symptoms. You could argue that that's dangerous because they've lost their hypoglycemic awareness, but assuming they're wearing a CGM, they're safe. And I would point out that many of these folks are now protected from lethal hypoglycemia. So there's a lot for us to understand about the intersection of ketosis and type 1 diabetes. Hi, I'm Ivor Cummins, uh, also known as the Fat Emperor. And I have a new book out called Eat Rich, Live Long with Dr. Jeffrey Gerber. I did a lot of research a year ago around insulin resistance in the adipose tissue. And I used to believe that the liver was really the main central uh, place where insulin resistance played out. And it was really the behemoth. And now I realize the adipose tissue is actually where a lot of action goes on and earlier than in the liver. So the adipose tissue for me now is as central as the liver. So it's changed my perception. Okay, so I'm Chris Bear with Keto Chow. I've been listening to a lot of Peter Ballersted's stuff. Guys, okay, fantastic. Uh, last year, I had no idea that eating beef was sustainable and good for the environment. Hey guys, it's Mega here. So one thing that I believed to be true a year ago that I no longer believe to be true is that the gut had nothing to do with overall immune health and your physical and your internal health. So an example is I have psoriasis. And recently in the past month, I've started cutting out dairy, nuts, 
caffeine, certain things that um, can cause inflammation to become worse. And I've noticed an improvement in my psoriasis symptoms and just how I feel day to day. So now I definitely have a firm belief in that your healthy gut, your gut bacteria plays a huge role in how you feel day to day. What's up guys, it's Matt, Keto Connect. And one thing I believed a year ago that I no longer believe to be true is the idea of a colorful and varied diet is essential to human health. I think it can be an essential part, but as long as you're getting good sources of meat, uh, good sources of fat, there is nothing that plants have that animals do not have. If you're eating a varied diet, you're eating some organ meats, you're supplementing with like some cod liver oil, you don't have to go out of your way to get in a crazy amount of vegetables to be healthy on a keto diet. Thanks so much for watching the amazing video, guys. Everyone that you heard speak will be linked below, so definitely give everyone some love, check them out. And also let us know what your answer to the question is. What do you no longer believe to be true?